friends who dearly call. I'd like to thank very much Uganda Matters University and Professor Father Peter Kanyanda Go for inviting me to join you in your conference. I've just returned from Davos at a gathering of some of the world's most powerful business and political leaders. I attend every year to take the voice of the poorest and most marginalized people of Africa and around the world. I go there in particular to challenge them to tackle rising economic inequality and to end poverty. Let me tell you about inequality. One week ago, we released a report on the scale of inequality and the frightening pace at which it's growing. Read it if you get the chance. It's called An Economy for the 1% and it's made headlines around the world. Our report shows that a tiny group of super rich, just 62 people, now own more wealth than the 3.6 billion people who make up the poorest half of the world's population. That figure of 62 is down from 80 people last year, and as recently as 2010, it was 388 people. You can see, wealth is increasingly concentrated in the hands of a very few. And our continent is not exempt. Six African countries, South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, Zambia, Central African Republic, and Lesotho, are among the top 10 most unequal countries in the world. In Africa and around the world, it makes no economic or moral sense to have so much wealth in the hands of so few people. In Uganda, our own Sudir Rupairela's wealth amounts to 1.1 billion. If he gave away half of his wealth to his fellow citizens, over the next 15 years. This would reduce poverty in Uganda by 1%, lifting hundreds of thousands out of poverty. But that's not the point, because economic inequality will not be solved by the rich giving away their riches. Extreme inequality we are facing today is hardwired in our economies. It has to be tackled at source. Over the last 30 years, Policies such as privatization, deregulation, globalization, financial secrecy, these have provided opportunities for rich people to rig the rules of the economy in their favor. So why do we fight extreme inequality? It's not because we envy rich people. No. The IMF has shown through several reports that this kind of extreme inequality is a drag on economic growth of our nations. We grow slower with such extremes of inequality. It also puts a break on the fight against poverty. World leaders came together last year with the ambition of eradicating extreme poverty by 2030. Unless Unless we can reduce economic inequality, we will not achieve this target. But thirdly, economic inequality sparks social unrest. We see this in Latin America, the most unequal region in the world. This region is home to 41 of the world's 50 most dangerous cities, and one woman is murdered every 18 hours. One of the most striking examples of how the super rich have rigged the economy is tax havens, which benefit nobody except the super rich themselves. Tax havens allow wealthy corporations and individuals to avoid paying their fair share of taxes. This robs governments of the vital money that could that could pay for schools, healthcare, and other essential services. Oxfam estimates that $7.6 trillion of individual wealth is currently held offshore in tax havens. That's more than the combined GDP of the UK and Germany. And in Africa, almost one third of the financial wealth of rich individuals, that's about $500 billion is held offshore in tax havens.
in 2014. That's costing African countries an estimated $14 billion per year in lost tax revenues. $14 billion. This is enough money to pay for the health care that could save the lives of 4 million children in Africa and employ enough teachers to get every African child in school. That's a lot. But friends, don't despair. We have reasons to be optimistic. There are solutions to reverse economic inequality. And it starts with rewriting the rules on taxation and ending the escape of our revenues from the continent. Tax avoidance is a problem that is rapidly getting worse. We have to close all the loopholes in our tax system so that companies, rich individuals, are reporting their profits and paying their taxes in every country where they make their money. We also have to tackle the question of harmful tax competition. Currently, our countries are forced into a race to the bottom as they compete to attract companies. And this is happening between African countries. They keep giving away business opportunities, tax exemptions, tax holidays, tax breaks. To tackle tax avoidance, we need a global approach to rewrite the global tax rules. African countries should push harder to make this happen at the global level. African governments should also cooperate on tax at a regional level. Uganda could lead in the region. We can engage the African Union to set regional standards so that in Africa we protect our countries and our people from a race to the bottom in taxes. But also, it goes beyond tax avoidance. When companies and wealthy individuals aren't paying their fair share of taxes, then poor people suffer twice because governments then shift the tax burden onto poor people by setting regressive taxes such as VAT. VAT actually makes up around 67% of tax revenues in Africa. Through VAT, a market woman who sells tomatoes pays higher tax rate relative to her income than a millionaire businessman in Kampala. We need to shift the burden of taxation away from the poor back onto rich individuals and companies. As we raise the revenue, we must prioritize spending on our people's capabilities and on creating jobs. Our governments have to invest in quality public services, especially health and education for all and the skills for our youth. African governments as a priority should diversify their economies from high commodity dependence to value addition. Investments in agriculture and infrastructure can provide millions of jobs for our young people. But for all this to happen, people must be able to tell their governments and get their governments to do what they want, hold their governments accountable. We must bring back power to people. Business leaders should not be able to cut shady deals with governments. We need to claim back our democracy so that the people's agenda can be fulfilled. We must become active citizens who are organized and who, who can hold our governments accountable. My friends, inequality is not inevitable. We have or we can build the power to reverse it. Let us organize. I wish you all the very best with your important conference today. And I look forward to hearing from Father Peter Kanyandago about the results. And I look forward to seeing some of you on Twitter telling me what's going on there. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.